last video talked about how we use experiments in political science generally. This video will describe what we refer to as natural experiments and explain how they're different than just comparing two countries to each other. In true experiments, the researcher is the one who decides what cases get a treatment, like a negative campaign ad, and what cases get the control, no ad. By controlling assignment to treatment, they can be sure that it was a truly random process, which is important because only random processes generate equivalent treatment and control groups. In natural experiments, the researcher does not assign cases to treatment, but some outside factor does. When that factor is truly what we call exogenous, then we can treat it as if it were a random process. Some examples that have been used in political science include the British Empire arbitrarily drawing administrative borders, the United Nations arbitrarily deciding where to send election monitors within a country, or when there's a disconnect between in, uh, state boundaries in the United States and media markets. You, uh, an individual might get randomly assigned it to one political division, but a different media division. I'll explain this in a little bit more detail, but first I want to contrast it with comparing two cases to each other and explain why this matters. Comparing two similar countries to each other is a great way to rule out our alternate explanations for a theory. As Ajimolu and Robinson note in Why Nations Fail, the similar cultures of North and South Korea allow us to rule that out as an explanation for their levels of economic development. But we always have to ask how similar two countries are, really. The border between North and South Korea wasn't done entirely randomly. It was in part the result of years of warfare. What if Koreans who agreed with a communist ideology all moved to the North during this time to fight for what they believe in, while Koreans who believed in capitalism moved to the South? I'm not saying that this actually happened, but if it did, it would weaken the argument that one aspect of cultural national ideology doesn't matter. It's difficult to find two countries or cases that are truly identical, which is why we often use other ways to draw conclusions about cause and effect. The difference between a paired comparison and a natural experiment is that we have reason to believe the way people or borders were assigned was truly random or arbitrary. Dan Posner makes this case in his article, The Political Salience of Cultural Difference. He argues that when the British drew the boundary between what became Malawi and Zambia, they paid no attention to the distribution of ethnic groups within the country. It was arbitrary. He uses this to make the case that the relative size of ethnic groups in part determines the level of conflict between them, because larger groups are easier for politicians to mobilize on exclusively ethnic grounds. Posner goes further in making his case when he selected specific villages in each country to study. He chose them specifically to rule out other potential reasons why they might display different levels of intergroup prejudice and political activity including exposure to other groups, economic explanations, and their connection to their country's capital. But whenever you read about a natural experiment, you really should have Sheriff from Clueless in your head saying, as if, because while natural experiments can be very powerful, they're also very rare, and you should be skeptical that assignment to treatment was truly random. To go back to the study of the Chiwas and Tambucas, Posner has a good case to make that the border between Zambia and Malawi was arbitrarily drawn. He does not provide this evidence, but there actually is a ton of it that shows that the British did this all over their empire. There is one problem, though, and that's that the border was drawn in 1891. Chiwas and Tambucas moved across that border during the past 130 years, and it's possible that members of both groups that were interested in being a part of a larger political group moved to Malawi during that time, and that those uh, types of people might be more prejudiced towards other groups. Again, I don't have any reason to think this actually happened, but Posner doesn't address the fact that the border has been around for a very long time. What Posner does do well is make the case that the two ethnic groups are similar in every other way he could think of. He addresses a wide variety of alternate explanations, which strengthens his theory that the size of the group is what matters. In conclusion, paired comparisons, and their slightly more rigorous cousins, natural experiments, are really strong methods to use to rule out alternate explanations, but they have their weaknesses just like any other approach.